It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is David Harrison of the Locked On Commanders Podcast, here to tell you that U.S. Cellular knows how important your kids' relationship with technology is, and they've made it their mission to help them establish good digital habits early on. That's why they've partnered with Screen Sanity, a nonprofit dedicated to helping kids navigate the digital landscape. And for a smarter start to the school year, U.S. Cellular is also offering a free basic phone on new eligible lines, providing an alternative to a smartphone for children. Start smarter with U.S. Cellular. Visit uscellular.com slash built for us to find out more. Terms apply. We are back, baby, with another Monday episode of your source for fantasy hockey news and breakdowns. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Mr. Steele Roden and your boy Big Flip Livingstone. Today's episode features a breakdown of where Patrick Kane might be headed and some of the top fantasy teams that you want to be mining for those top players on your squad for this upcoming year. Thank you for joining us. Happy Monday. Let's get this paper. You're locked on fantasy hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fantasy fanatics, degenerate gamblers, and hockey heads, welcome back inside the lab. That is the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, Monday edition, and thank you for making us your first listen. Every single day, we are drawing so ever near to this fantasy draft season, and Steele and I are getting very, very serious about this preparation, which continues on today's episode. We need to talk a little bit about this Fantasy Hockey Listener League. Thank you so much for all of your interest, comments, DMs. We have a little bit of information we want to share on today's episode, and we're going to continue to tee that up over the coming weeks because draft season is near everybody. And also, Patrick Kane, a little bit of rumblings coming out about the teams that he has been talking to. Still fantasy relevant, Steel, so I know I need your take on this. And there are a number of very interesting squads around the NHL this year, Steel that I'm just really liking the outlook for. So I'm going to continue to go back to the mine, to the well, to make sure I'm drafting players from some of these teams because it's going to set us up for fantasy success. So why don't I turn it over to you, though, because you and I talked a little bit off air. There has been so much interest that we know we got to be drafting by the end of September, but we're drafting two leagues this year with all of our listeners and our followers. Yeah, very excited about this upcoming season, year 2.0 edition of the Locked On Listener League here. And again, we couldn't be more excited. A lot of the people from last year's league already DMing us, wanting to return. Uh, a few new a, a few new uh, people as well wanting to jump in on this action with Flip and I with the Locked On Hockey Listener League. So couldn't be more excited about yep. uh, all the all the interest happening that's why we're going to two different leagues this upcoming year yes, there will be a casual and a competitive we are mm -hmm. still ironing out the details of what the entry fee will be but obviously the casual will be more on the light side maybe 10 mm -hmm. 20 dollars and then competitive we're still ironing out those details you'll get those details over the following weeks Yes. Uh, on on the on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey podcast, of course. So make sure you're keeping an yep. eye out for all of that. But the, mm. the most important information that we can get out there right now is yes. even if you're commenting on a U on the YouTube channel about mm -hmm. your interest in the league, the best mm. way for both Flip and I to get all the information, make sure you're DMing us on Twitter or mm -hmm. now X uh, with Elon Ooh. Musk uh, yeah. running yeah. the show there. So are we still calling it Twitter? Yeah. What are we doing? I here? don't know. I was about, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to call it the X. All right. Just DM us, I guess, for now. The yeah, X just, sounds just... like something kind of naughty. And I don't know <laughs> if we want people DMing us about that. But yeah, hit us in the DMs either way. But we're ready to go for this year. We are ready to go. So yeah, DM us. We'll call it Twitter for now. DM us Thank on you. Twitter. Thank you. Uh, full, your full name uh, with your email and as well whether you want to be a part of the casual or competitive league again yes. we're still ironing out the deep details mm -hmm. but the most important thing you can do right now if you are interested is yeah. dm us on twitter your full name and your email so we can put you down mm -hmm. on the list and get you in that draw for the two different le leagues we've got com uh, coming this upcoming season and yeah we couldn't be more excited to get uh 
everybody that could return from last year's league as well as some new people and yep. just continue to grow the community of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast Listener League. Last year's members will be automatically re-entered into that draw. Steel and I will continue to release information, but the main thing is also make sure you have subscribed to the channel, you follow us on Twitter, and make sure you drop us a five-star review across whatever platform that you listen to us on because I'm telling you, Steel, I'm coming for you this year, pal. You you showed <laughs> up. Luck. To, you you show, Yeah, well, I'm going to need it because you showed up the veteran last year. Mans were on a bit of a heater drafting goaltenders all over the place. <laughs> and what honestly, I'm just grateful that you and I are able to come on here, help people with their fantasy teams, help people make a little bit of money. And you and I are learning year in, year out, pal. And I just need to try and just show out right now that I'm coming for you. But here's another thing right now. Patrick Kane. This situation that has been, I feel like you and I have perhaps spoken about Patrick Kane's situation <laughs> as a singular player. Look, we talk about everything on this show, right? Line combinations, who's going where, rookies, prospects, bets, awards, predictions. But for some reason, and maybe it's because of how much of a stud I think Patrick Kane still can be in the right situation. We have talked about this player a lot and we're not going to keep this conversation too long. But what I've read is, Patty Kane, link two. And this is David Pagnotta, by the way, people of the athletics. So this is a very serious report. Colorado Avalanche, Dallas Stars, New York Islanders steal, and the last team, which I think I texted you the other night, which makes the most sense to me just from, you know, it'll pee us off as Leafs fans. The Boston <laughs> Bruins are circulating for a veteran forward that they know they need to circulate into that lineup. What do you think about these reports? And I have two teams that I have circled here as where if I'm Patrick Kane, I'd like to go. Yeah. What's your take on this overall situation? Yeah, I've got three teams circled over here okay. as well, and none of them are the teams you just mentioned. Uh, I'll start Whoa. off with I'll, I'll start off with the Colorado Avalanche and the Dallas Stars. I just don't believe any of those are going to actually happen. Uh, mm. I, I think it's out of the question. They might again might be rumored, but personally, I don't think Patrick Kane is going to either Colorado or the Dallas Stars. I would love okay. to see him on Long Island, get some more action out there, maybe some offensive production. I think that'd be great for the club. Uh, right. I don't think he will end up going there. Uh, right. And then what was that last team that you mentioned? Bruins. 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 That one might sting the most. <laughs> but they do they do need some offensive hey, help with everything makes, that's going it on. It makes a lot of sense. It does make the most sense. But I'll, I'll, start, I'll start off with the first team I have circled here. Okay. And I, it's a little bit of a cop out, but I think most people would say this answer as well. And it's the Buffalo Sabres. He's from Buffalo. Right, right. He's from the yep. area. Okay. Uh, it's the same reason Alex Tuck wanted to go back there as well. He wanted to play for Buffalo. He's from there New as York. well. Yep. Uh, yeah, from the area. And yeah, so he's from there. They've got the cap space. They've got 8.7 million mm. in cap space right now. Mm. And this is a very, very young team that could use that veteran leadership and mentorship as from a guy like Patrick Kane, who's won multiple Stanley Cups, like just going down the list mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, they've got Jeff Skinner. Uh, okay. They've got Kyle Lock Poso. They've got Eric Johnson now on the back end, but they don't have that stud. They don't have no. that guy who's been no there caliber of winning, no caliber of winning. And you need that for these young guys like Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, okay. uh, you know, Alex Tuck, yeah. even they're, they're getting yep. up there. So I think a guy like Patrick Kane, again, would bring a little bit more, uh, uh, stability, not maybe stability on that uh, veteran offense, presence, veteran presence on that offensive group with all these young guys who are now right. making a name right. for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then secondly, the second team I have circled here, this one might be a little bit of a long shot, but the okay. Detroit Red Wings, they also have the cap I like space. It, yeah, they have like the it. cap space there. I believe they have just under 6 million in cap space uh, for Steve. Yeah, yeah 5.9 5. 5. Uh, for the Detroit Red Wings. And what about returning to action with Alex Dabrinkit? They had some great chemistry in the Chicago in, in Chicago, and could easily see that happening. Uh, I, a guy like you know a general manager of Steve Eiserman's caliber who can just get things done. I think that would be great for Detroit. I think it'd be great for the direction they're heading, and overall, just great for both Dabrinkit and Dylan Larkin. I don't know if you know this, but I just saw this the other day. Dylan Larkin has only played uh, in his entire career with a player one season put up over 60 points. And that was Tyler Ooh, Bertuzzi back in stat. 2020. Good stuff. So Dil Dylan Larkin has never really played with a guy. 
And I'm not saying Patrick Kane is that guy anymore. He's going to be 35 right. years old. And the injury can concerns. The injury in, yeah, concerns. It does. It, the injury is concerned, but bringing that back, getting the yeah. chemistry with Alex to bring it. Okay. I think that could even get Dylan Larkin fired up for his, yeah. this upcoming season. So those are two teams. And then I have one more, but I want to hear from you first. I'm going to hit it quickly because I do want to focus our conversation today on these top teams that I really think you can continue to go back to as just really good fantasy situations. And I'll explain how I'm looking at that around the break. And we'll get to that in a very hot minute. You mentioned right off the top, though, that you don't think it'll be the Avs and Stars. And I don't disagree. I just think as Patrick Kane and his agent representation, those would be the two teams that I'm actually looking at because he's not yeah. going anywhere that he can't think he's winning. And when I look at all of the teams that he's been rumored to be in, and as much as I agree with Buffalo and Detroit for every single reason that we just talked about, I can't deny it. He's not going anywhere that is a bubble team. And both of those teams are bubble teams. The Avalanche and the Stars are not bubble teams. I think they will be very much playoff threats. The caliber of players are also much better up front with both of those teams. Mm -hmm. Even though Detroit got better, Buffalo, you know I love, but a lot of young players. Everything fits, but here it is at the end of the day, Steel. Avs and Stars, this guy's not going anywhere that's not a cup contender. The cap is what you brought up first. And that is probably what's going to get in the way here. What is he willing to take? I know he's a UFA, right? He's got to be a UFA. Yep. He is a UFA. What is he willing to take? Because at Patrick Kane's stage of his career, it ain't about the money, baby. It's about putting another ring on his finger. And that would be four. And that would yep. obviously cement what is already a Hall of Fame career. Anyway, hit me with your last team and let's go to break. Last team, and I think this one is honestly is a pretty obvious one, and that's Ch the Chicago Blackhawks. I think it would be great. It would be great for him to return back to a city where right. they already love him. There, they've got the cap space. Interesting and you moves have the, too this off and, season. Yeah, interesting moves, and then you have that opportunity of playing with Connor Bedard again mm -hmm. on that top line with uh, you know whoever it is, uh, Lucas Reichel, or you know a couple of uh, guys that we've going to be Anthony a mix. See you could be a mix of players, but. They love him in Chicago. He's won there multiple times. Obviously, it's a little bit of a long shot to win there this next season. Right, but right. getting a chance for, A, Connor Bedard to play with Patrick mm -hmm. Kane and Patrick Kane to play with Bedard, I think that would yeah. be unreal to see. Yeah, you can also never count out that he might go back there. That's never something that is, I think, fully off the table. I don't know if it's going to happen just because of the yeah. last thing that I just brought up about he ain't going nowhere that isn't at least have a really good shot at a top yeah. spot and a good position in the playoffs. What you need to do to put yourself in a top spot and good position is to be trying out AG1 because today's episode is brought to you by AG1. And before we get to the top teams, you want to be mining for fantasy value. We got to holler at our partner, AG1, the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. Steel and I love taking it every single day before or after the gym, regardless of where we're at. We're hitting up AG1 in the morning before we hit the gym in the afternoon. It makes us feel honestly unstoppable, ready to take on the day. And that's because it's a foundational nutritional supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. It can replace your multivitamin, your probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. No need for a million different supplements. It's a science-driven foundation of vitamins and probiotics, whole food source nutrients that raises the standard for quality in the supplement game. AG1 helps build your health foundation first. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, you got to be trying out AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. That's drinkag1 slash NHL network. Check it out today. NFL Sunday Ticket is now on YouTube and YouTube TV which means that it just got easier to be an NFL fan, even if you live far away. Like, maybe you like the Bears, but you're hibernating in Panthers territory. But with NFL Sunday Ticket, your out-of-market team is never more than a short distance away, specifically the distance from you to your remote control. NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. Go to youtube.com slash presale to get $50 off. Terms and embargoes apply. Offer ends 919. No refund. Subscription auto renews. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, 
where you can find your favorite sports team from all four major sports leagues, including the NCAA, your team every single day. And remember, continue to subscribe and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe on the YouTube channel. Leave us a five-star review. And remember as well, Boom. DM us if you're interested in the Locked On Fantasy yes. Hockey Listener League. Your full name, your email. That's the t- that's the information we're looking for right now so we can have you on the list and put you in the draw to enter our two different leagues, casual and competitive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, DM us at LO underscore fantasy NHL on Twitter. That's where we'll be receiving all those DMs and getting all of that information. So thank you so much for tuning in every single day. Flip. What teams are you looking at where you can just get yeah. all the gold, all the players, <laughs> and just have all the talent on your fantasy team this season? A couple of these teams, Steel, actually cross over with the list of some of those underrated trios that we talked about the other day. And make yep. sure if you've missed any of the preseason coverage, any of the offseason coverage, you can hit us up on the YouTube channel. It's all there for you. Go back, do the research. I've been doing it as well, Steel, so that you and I can get better. But two of the teams that come to mind right away are the Sabres and the Kings. And I'm not actually going to break it down because we have already, and I know in our mock drafts, in our positional breakdowns, and in everything you and I are going to do, breakouts, X-Factors, and otherwise, I have a feeling we're going to be talking a lot about both of those teams. So I just want to shout out in general that the Sabres and the Kings are two teams that I'm looking at. And I want to actually start with the Ottawa Senators. And I'm talking very specifically about offensive value here. They bring in Dominique Kubelik to balance out that front line. I know Debrinkat is gone, but I think Brady Kachuk, Tim Stutzla, Drake Batherson, and a healthy Josh Norris, the addition of Vladimir Tarasenko, there is enough here, Steele, that offensively and their top two D-men, and I'm talking about actually three, Shabbat, Sanderson, and Chikrin, all of those guys in the top six and the top four on the blue line to me, yeah. And so top four, top three on the blue line are all top six, seven round draftable players. And I know you might, you know, there's a peripheral there with Giroux or maybe Tarasenko because they're a little older. The Ottawa Senators are going to score a ton of goals. I think they got better in net. And yep. say what you will about the overall success, because that's not what I'm going here for, because I don't know fully. What's going to happen in that Metro division? And you and I are going to talk a lot about those predictions (laughs) as well. But I'm just saying, if I'm looking to fill offensive categories, I'm going Timmy Stutz, Brady Kachuk at the top end. Then I'm going Norris. Then I'm going Batherson. And then I'm looking down the lineup, Giroux, Tarasenko, even on the back end in Sanderson. This is what I'm saying. That's the first team I'm looking at. You can continue to go back to. They have a lot of weapons there for sure and a weapons. lot of great weapons. fantasy hockey pl- assets to be had uh, for your fantasy hockey team. I'll start in the Eastern Conference as well. And again, this might, uh, you know, overall success of the team, whether they make the mm. playoffs or not, that's still up for question. That's something yeah. that you and I will talk about. Yes. But I'm actually looking at the Pittsburgh Penguins here. Ooh, okay. And this, the last year coming off for Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, especially yeah. both played a full year, 82 games. Crosby, 93 points. Malkin, 83 points. Yeah. Obviously, Jake Gensel just had ankle surgery, but he should be back. He'll honestly, be back. they said in the first week of, of the hockey season. So Upgrade. First first okay. or second week back. So he's only supposed okay. to miss six games of what okay. I've read. So he'll be back fully healthy uh, You know, to start the season as well. He had 73 points last year. Ricard Raquel had 60 points. I think we could see a little bit more out of him. Sure, uh, you know, a sure. bounce back season out of Brian Russ. I don't think he had the Ooh. best year. Only had 46 out of 80, uh, 46 points in 81. They go, out in. And, okay. they go out and acquire Eric Carlson, uh, mm. who had an unreal year. Probably not going to have triple digit points again, but he's going to be a threat on the power play mm. right there with Chris Letang. Chris Letang, only 64 games as well. Obviously struggles with a lot of, uh, you know, illnesses and, and, and you know body yeah, off uh, ice yeah it, off ice situations injuries of that sort so yes. hopefully he can be fully healthy and then with all of that being said i think that will increase tristan jari's fantasy Boom. hockey season you had to as say well yeah. had to say it so for me i'm looking at the pittsburgh penguins oh okay also they go out and get our boy riley smith too so that's some action right hey, there on the right top uh, top two lines. So yep. I like what Pittsburgh's done. Again, overall success. It's up for mm. question because the Eastern mm. Conference looks absolutely stacked. But yeah. I like what they've done so far. Kyle Dubas, an absolute G. 
Yeah, he's been coming off the top rope. I, you know, say what you <laughs> will about though the rest of that Eastern Conference. And this is where I think we have to separate some of the focus of these conversations and really zero in on the fact that are you going to continue to draft players from the same team? No, you're not. But maybe yeah. if you focus in on some of these advantageous situations that in the offseason these GMs have put their teams into – Ottawa is sitting pretty. Yeah, it's on paper, but I'd rather invest, you know, Penguin same sitting pretty right now, looking good on paper, all the moves that they've made. You like what's going on, but I'd rather associate myself and my draft pick steal when it comes to fantasy with those good situations. And I think that's what you and I are going to continue to look at. And I'll look at it this way also to leave the conversation at this for these two teams in the East Ottawa. I'm going more elite level talent aside from yeah. maybe Sid and Eric Carlson. The rest I'm willing to take maybe Gino as well that you brought up. You're looking more elite level. Later rounds, you're looking at the Penguins, and we're going to continue to talk about a couple more of these teams. Actually, Steele, I got a team from the East, and I got a team from the West to talk about right after the break. Absolutely. I can't wait to hear what this team from the West is because I got one out there as well. There's no off-season for the true NHL fan, and there are no off days for Locked On NHL. This offseason, Locked On NHL has you taken care of. In just 30 minutes every day, Locked On NHL will give you the latest on all the fireworks of the NHL offseason. Locked On NHL, free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all that love and support you show us every single day and continue to DM us on Twitter if you want to be a part of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast Listener League. We got two separate leagues going, casual and competitive. So again, full name, email, and whether you want to be a part of the casual or competitive league. De more details to be had in the next following weeks or the following week as well. So just continue to DM us if you want to participate. We want everyone to be included in this. It's going to be an absolutely amazing season. Year two of doing this. Flip, do you want to go to your Western Conference team or you want to stick in the East? Well, let me go with the West, if that's okay, Steele. And are yeah, you turn yeah. I just want to make sure you're turning it back over to me already. Because you have one squad left or two? I got one squad. I got one squad okay, left. Okay, well, I just want to hit you with this right off the top. The Colorado Avalanche are only one year removed from being the Stanley Cup champions. And I know that some of the moves that they brought in are not exactly surefire success, get excited. Ryan Johansson is now the second line center. That's a boomer bust situation, Steele, I really do think. I don't think yeah. it's going to be a middle of the lineups kind of thing. He's either going to go off and fit nicely or the Colorado Avalanche are playing with fire there and he has injury concerns. So mm -hmm. I'm not exactly ready to just say go off and invest in Ryan Johansson, Ross Colton, and Miles Wood that they brought in. But when I take a little look back, and also don't forget they brought in Jonathan Druin, there are a lot more astute fantasy hockey minds than me already predicting that some of these moves, when you pair them up with the likes of Miko Rantanen, Nathan McKinnon, Valerie Nachushkin, I know that's not a household name, but also Arturi Lekkinen. These guys have been getting it done, right? Fantasy GMs take note because there could be a good situation here to be have or there could be potentially boom or bust. But I'll also leave it at this because, yes, they are a team steal that I'm looking at to mine for fantasy value because it's actually focused on the back end. Alexander Gorgiev had 40 wins last year, and this team is going to be very solid defensively. I know you backed me up on this take. Not even fantasy value per se, but it's close as well. Devin Taves, yep. Kale McCarr, Bowen Byram and Josh Manson as the top four might be the best two top pairings when it gets it done at both ends of the ice in the entire NHL. That is up for debate, but I'm looking hard at this Colorado team steal because I do think Miles Wood, Ross Colton, and Ryan Joe fit in quite nicely, and this team is going to be a very serious threat for another cup. I think they will be as well. And very interesting for Jonathan Druin as well. Yes. Uh, getting yes. back to action with Nathan McKinnon, who they have some history in Halifax with. 
what's the, what's the situation with Gabriel Landeskog? Is there any update on him? Like when he's going to return so, or that's a really good question, Steele. And I have looked into it. I think that this man is so banged up and in such a serious capacity yeah. that I don't think this team is, you know, the reports out there that, you know, he's still recovering. He might yeah. need more time. I don't think this is one of those situations that this team really fully wants to report on because I think they know what the end answer is. This guy, I don't think has another shot in the NHL. I've been proven wrong before steel, but (laughs) I think what I meant to say is we'd be hearing more specific details if it was anything beneficial, because that's when a team really does want to share those pieces of news and you haven't heard much of anything. So I would say, you know, really long answer long here, Gabriel Landish Sure. If he comes back, he's important. I just don't see it. That man's knees, his body, it's banged up real bad. It's up in the air right now for sure. We would love to see him back in action, of course, but yes. uh, with those type of injuries, it's always it's always a question mark about how soon and when and if mm-hmm. it can return back to action. Uh, the one team who might be the biggest threat for the Vegas or the uh, Colorado a- Avalanche is that Vegas Golden Knights team right there, and that's the team uh-huh. I'm going to yeah. for a gold mine. And this is my like reasoning it. as well. Three, nice three reasons. Jack Eichel, Mark Stone, and Shea Theodore. Uh, mm. Those three players especially lost a lot of time to injury last year. Jack Eichel had 66 points in 67 games. Uh, Shea Theodore, 41 points in only 55 games. And then, of course, Mark Stone, 38 points in 43 games. I still think the other players, like Stevenson was a stud. Marcia so was a stud. Mm-hmm. Alex Petrangelo was a stud, 54 points in 73 games. Yep. A lot of great players, but Jack Eichel, Shea, Shea Theodore, and Mark Stone missing that significant amount of time mm-hmm. uh, are some of your best, probably two of your best three players right there, yep. uh, is very significant, as well as going through five different goalies in the regular season. So for me, I think the Vegas Golden Knights, obviously, they win the Stanley Cup. An absolute incredible accomplishment for a lot of those players on the team, but right. they're hungry again. They want to come back, and they're hopefully they can remain fully healthy. And again, I'm such a huge Jack Eichel fan right yes, now, you are. fantasy hockey yes, you wise, are. especially that he's going to be one of the players that I'm going after immediately again. So yeah, those yep. are my reasons right there. I'll leave it at that. But I think yeah. this is a team that you can pick a lot of players for the gold mine. I'm really glad you brought this up, Seal, because I hemmed and hawed on this one. I thought about including them as honorable mention. I thought about even having them right on my list because they're the Stanley reigning Stanley Cup champions. And there is a lot to be said about the balance of this team. And we yeah. know when a squad is balanced, it allows their stars and their fantasy studs to show out. And I think that's what's about to happen for Jack. Oh, and I, for, I forgot Please. Ivan Barbashev as well, signing that Ivan. deal too. There you go. And look... I think the underrated tandem that's going to be Aiden Hill and Logan Thompson is also something to be reckoned with because, hey, Aiden Hill took that team to a cup in the playoffs. Logan Thompson carried them through the regular season with very little experience. Yeah, a lot of people would be looking at it, Steele, probably like, oh, well, there's not a lot of track record there, and they wouldn't be wrong. But I can't help but feel that the GM, the franchise, everything that's been put in place for this team to succeed is going to continue to happen. And I'll just leave it at this because it's the New Jersey Devils that's last on my list. Yep. Because I think just like looking at this lineup, and I know you (laughs) and I have had some differing of opinions a little bit, not much on the Devils, but I think where it is is in the goaltending area that we're a little bit unsure about what happens with this team. Yeah, Vitek, Vanacek, Kira Schmid, Schmid, however you say it. There's a lot to be answered there. But when you look up front, Steele, Timo Meyer, Nico Heischer, <laughs> Dawson Mercer, Jesper Bratt, Jack Hughes, Tyler Toffoli, and even on the third line, I had Eric Halla in and out of my lineup last year, Steele, for a number of moments. He picks up assists. He picks up a little bit of peripherals. He's a veteran centerman. Sometimes those he will shift up the lineup if those guys get hurt. They also are bringing in Alexander Holtz as a really oh, interesting yeah. young player. And I haven't even talked about Dougie Hamilton, Luke Hughes, Segan Thaler, and of course the goaltending, which will get a lot of looks in terms of wins. We got to be looking at the Devils because they'll be knocking on that door steal for many years to come in the Metro Division, 100%. They're going to be one of the top three teams. Where will they finish, though? That's something Flip and I will have to discuss in the following weeks as well. Predictions, early, early predictions of placement uh, and playoff teams in the Eastern Conference, Western Conference will have to be had. 
The debate will be up in action. We'll go back and forth. Of course, we will flip. But those are the teams where you can find some gold mines. Vegas Golden Knights, New Jersey Devil, Colorado Avalanche, Pittsburgh Penguins, Ottawa Senators, and there's a few more that we weren't able to get to. But those are a few of them that you've got to look to when you're drafting those players for your fantasy hockey team. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you're tuning in Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We will break down everything you need to know, continuing releasing all those juicy details for the Locked On Listener League year two edition. Uh, and we again, just as many people that want to participate, DM us Let's on go. Twitter. We'll get you into the league. We'll put you in the draw. Full name, email, and whether you want to be a, a part of the casual or competitive league. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your summer bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace. Hey, Prime members. You can listen to this Locked On podcast ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today.